Hello guys, welcome to my session. In any examination that you take, there are two things that are of paramount importance. One, how do you solve a particular question? As in, the approaches that are there to a particular question. Second, how long do you take to solve that particular question? The second one is what we are going to be addressing today. In any competitive exam that you take, you always have a definite set of questions that has to be solved in a definite amount of time. A lot of students actually find it really difficult to solve large number of questions in that particular span of time. So, in this session, I will be sharing with you a few shortcuts and tricks that will help you solve questions faster, hence saving time, and also ending the examination on a high note. Let us now look at one type of problem. So what is 77 percentage of 64? This is actually a very common type of problem that you can see in a lot of examinations. As in, they don't come as questions as such, but they come out as data in particular questions. So, we should be very careful as to not waste any large amount of time to solve this question. Now, students actually go about solving this 77 percentage of 64 in this fashion. 77 percentage can be written as 77 by 100 into 64. Now, this is what 77 percentage of 64 means. And when a lot of students, whenever they see two even numbers in the numerator and in the denominator, they go directly by reducing them or by simplifying them by two. What happens? Let's see. 32, 50, 16, 25. So, you have to multiply 77 into 16 and divide it by 25 to get the answer. Correct? Now, this is a very tedious process. If you see here, it is not actually simplification, it's actually complication. Trying to simplify a particular problem, you're actually complicating it several times. Because, let's take 77 by 164 as such. 77 by 100 can be written as 0 0.77, correct? Into 64 can be multiplied and it's just a one step process. One step of mathematical multiplication operation will leave us the answer. It's as in case of 64 into 0 0.77, but here, you have two steps of multiplication, 77 into 16 divided by 25, which is why we have to have shorter and more smarter tricks to help us solve such kind of patterns. Now, let's take it this fashion, 77 percentage of 64, correct? Now, 100 percentage of 64 is what? It's basically 64, correct? So, 100 percentage is 64, then what is 50 percentage of 64? It's nothing but 32, correct? Half of 64. So, 32. Now, what is 25 percentage of 64? It's half of 32, correct? Which will be 16. So, can I say 75 percentage of 64, as in 50 percentage plus 25 percentage, which is 75 percentage of 64, is equal to 32 plus 16? Yes, it's actually possible, which will be 48. So, 75 percentage of 64 is 48. Now, they ask us 77 percentage, which is 2 percentage greater than 75 percentage, correct? In certain scenarios, the option will be very wide apart. As in, if option A is 47.5, option B is 48.2, option C is 49.3. In such cases, if you find 48, that will be your answer. Or, what if... The options are 48.1, option B 48.2. In those cases, you have to find out what the remaining 2% is also. So how do you find that 2%? We know 100 percentage is 64, correct? What is 1 percentage of 64? 1 percentage of 64 is 0 0.64, correct? Now, 0 0.64 into 2 will give us 2 percentage, correct? So, 2 percentage is equal to 0 0.64 into 2 is 1.28. So, 2 percent is equal to 1.28. 75 percentage is 48. 48 plus 1.28 will give us 77 percentage of 64. Hence, the answer to this question, which is 77 percentage of 64, is 49.28. So, if actually, if you eliminate all my explanations and try to solve this question, this would take you a maximum of 6 to 7 seconds to solve it because this trick is very fast. This can also be applied to a lot of similar terms as in 67 percentage of something wherein you have to find 50 percentage, then 60 percentage, then 7 percentage which will also help you in a lot of data interpretation problems as well. So this is how you have to solve percentage based problems in a flash. 
The second type of problem that actually takes a long time to solve is the approximation and simplification type problems. So how do you go about solving such problems is the question. Here, first of all, we'll be approximating the given values given in the question and then go about simplifying it. Now these are the crude steps. Now approximating this problem further, 1295.97 can be approximated as 1296, correct? So 1296 divided by 35.87 can be approximated as 36, correct? 36 the whole square. There are two ways of going about simplifying this further. One, split 36 into 36 in the denominator. As there is an even number in the numerator and the denominator, go about reducing it by 2, 4, 8 or any even number that is there. Or, find out 36 squares separately and then cancel them out. If at all, you are calculating 36 squares separately, there are other two more ways to do it. One, by the normal multiplication that we know, or in a more smarter way, we can use a trick to find out squares of two digit numbers in a really fast manner. How do you do that? First of all, let us solve a few more examples to see how that trick works. What is the value of 49 square? In order to find this out, we have to assume a base. Let's assume the base as 50. Okay, now how much is 49 deviating from 50? If you add 1 to 49, we'll get 50, correct? So 49 is deviating by 50 by 1. Correct? So, the last two digits of your 49 square will be the square of the deviation. As in, over here, it will be 1 square. So, in two digits, 1 square can be written as 0, 1. Correct? So, the last two digits will be 0, 1. Now, as of the first two digits, okay, what is 50 by 2? It is 25. Correct? Now, remove that deviation, which is 1, from 25. So, 25 minus 1 will give you 24. Correct? So, the first two digits of your 49 square is 2401. So, the answer to 49 square is 2401. Now, let's try to find out 48 square. What is the deviation from 50? 2, correct? So, the last two digits will be deviation the whole square, which is 2 square, correct? So, which will be 0, 4. As of the first two digits. Now what's 50 by 2? 25. So remove 2 from 25, which will be 23. So 48 square is 2304. The only rule or the only limitation to this trick is that you need to remember squares of numbers from 1 to 25. If you know that, finding squares of numbers from 36, sorry, knowing squares of numbers from 26 to 75 is very easy. Now, what is 36 square? Now, what is the deviation from 50? It is 14, correct? So, 14 square is nothing but 196. And the last two digits of 36 square will be nothing but 96, correct? And we'll keep the 1 in 14 square as a carryover. Now, let's remove 14 from 25, which is half of 50, which will be 11. 25 minus 14 is 11. So, 11 plus the remaining 1 will give you 12, correct? So, 1296 is the required answer to 36 squared. So, 1296 divided by 1296 is nothing but 1. It's the required answer to this question. Now, this trick not only applies to 74, it also applies to numbers greater than 74 also. Wherein, you'll be taking the basis 100 right now, that's it. Extending this trick further, let's try to find out squares of numbers from 99. 99 square. What will be the answer? Now, let's take the base as 100 right now. What is the deviation from 100? 1. Correct? So the last two digits similarly will be 0, 1 again. So last two digits is 0 and 1. Now what about the first two digits? Now what is 100 by 2? It is 50. Correct? Now remove that 1 from 50 right now which is 49. Now, it is not 4901, but 49 into 2, which is 98, correct? So 99 square is 9801. Now, one extra step, multiply by 2, which is actually very easy to do. Next, let's try to find out 98 square, which will be, the deviation is 2 from 100, so the last two digits will be 2 square, correct? Which will be 04. 
As of the first two digits, remove the 2 from 50, which is 100 by 2. So, which will be 48, correct? 48 into 2 is 96, correct? So, 98 square is 9604. And it goes on, so on and so forth. This trick can be applied to any amount of two digit or three digit numbers, provided you take the base and it's half correctly. That's the only trick. And the multiplication factor should also be maintained. Now, do not try this trick for numbers like 399 or 499, or say, for example, 376 or 476. Why? Because conventional calculation might be faster than this trick. So, in in a lot of examinations, they will be asking you two digit squares. So, finding this using this trick is actually very simple, provided you get the necessary practice for it. The next type of question that we are going to look into are simplification type questions. Most often in an examination, they always try to ask you if a particular number is divisible by this particular number or not. And the number with which you are going to use might be a prime number which you do not know the tables of. So, it will get a little difficult for you to find out whether a particular number is divisible by that number or not. Now, this is a similar kind of question. Is 272 a multiple of 17? How will you find it out? Assuming you don't know the tables of 17, how will you do it? Now, this is a little tricky question, correct? As in, you have to take you know, a number of tries, at least 2 or 3 tries to find the answer. Whereas, I'll tell you, you can solve this in 10 seconds. Okay, if at all you know this trick, I'll tell you what this trick does. Let's take this number 272. I'll take the unit digit of this number. Okay, I'll multiply the unit digit by 5, which will give me 10. I'll tell you later why we are multiplying it by 5. First, let us stick to the process of the trick. Now, it gives you 10. Now, what is the remainder of the digit's value? It is 27. Correct. Now, we are going to remove 10 from 27. So, 27 minus 10 will give you 17. Correct. If the value that you get here is a multiple of 17, then definitely this number is a multiple of 17. Or, if at all you know, 289 is 17 squared. So, 289 minus 17 is 272. If at all you know certain methods of doing it, this method is going to be a little, you know, time taking. But if you don't know certain other methods, if multiplication is the only trick you know, then this such methods can come in handy. So why did I multiply it by 5? And why did I subtract the 10 from 27? These are two unanswered questions that I kept away. Correct? Now, let's address them now. now what is 17 into 1? 17. 17 into 2, 34. 17 into 3, we get as 51. Correct? Now, we are focusing on this number. Why? Now, any multiple of 17 that is closest to any multiple of 10 is what we are looking out for. Now, 51, isn't it the closest multiple of a particular multiple of 10? Exactly. Which multiple of 10? The fifth multiple of 10. Correct? So, 51 is closest to 50. Now, that is why we are multiplying the unit digit by 5. Correspondingly, whichever multiple of 10 your number gets close to, that we have to multiply the unit number with. This is the first step. Second, is 51 greater than 50 or lesser than 50? It's obviously greater than 50, correct? Since it is greater than 50, you are subtracting the value that you get by the remainder number of digits. Hence, 27 minus 10 is 17. So, 272 is a multiple of 17. So, this is how you go about it. Next. For 17, it works. What about other prime numbers? Let's take 13 for now. Let's take any number. Say 182. 182 divided by 13. Now, is it multiple or not? Now, we know 182 is definitely a multiple of 13. Correct? So, how will you do it? Let's take 182 now. Let's take the last number. Correct? 2. With what would you multiply? That's the next question that comes to your mind. 13 into 1 is 13. 13 into 2 is 26. 13 into 3 is 39. 39 is closer to the fourth multiple of 10. Correct? So, multiply 2 by 4. It should be 8. Correct? Now, 39. Is it lesser than 40 or greater than 40? It's lesser than 40. Correct? So, add the remainder of the digits to 8. 18 plus 8 is 26. Correct? Now, is 26 a multiple of 13? 
obviously yes. So if this number is multiple of 13, then 182 will also be a multiple of 13. 13 square is 169, 169 plus 13 is 182. That's how you can solve it as well. So this shows certain tricks of prime numbers. I repeat, these numbers, this shows certain tricks on prime numbers can be used. This trick applies to any number of prime numbers as in 17, 13, 19, 23, 29, 39, so on. And it also applies to 2, 3, 5 also. But why aren't we using it? Because we have better ways of divisibility rules for 2, 3 and 5. So this is how you can solve, you know, simplify questions so easily if you're not sure of the tables of any particular prime number. Now, a final word of caution when you're applying this trick. Now, you're multiplying the unit digit with either 5 or a 4 in these two cases, correct? Now, why are you multiplying it by 5? Because it's closest to the fifth multiple of 10. Now, what is that number? It is 51 in this case and in this case, it is 39, correct? You can only choose those multiples of a particular number that ends in either a 9 or in a 1. If it ends in a 2, 3 or 8, this trick does not apply. Only if the unit digit of a particular number, of particular multiple of a number, ends in a 1 or in a 9, only then those are considered to be closest to a multiple of 10. Now, remember this rule and everything should be fine.